You're welcome to First Take. My name is Jifa Bampo. Today, our guest is Enoch Tay Mensah, popularly known as E.T. Mensah, a man who was famously the mayor of Accra for 10 years and then a five-term MP for Ningo Pram Pram, now uh, the Greater Accra Region's uh, member of the Council of State. You're welcome to First Take. My name is Jifa Bampo. Thank you for joining us and much privilege that you allow us into your home. So you're a member of Council of State for Greater Accra. How is that progressing? Excellent. You've been a Minister of State. In fact, I think you've done, what, three, four other ministries? You were Labor seven and Employment, seven ministries, mm -hmm. Employment and Labor, Love Youth and acting. Sports. You acted in um, Education as uh, well, and, and, and fishing, Fisheries, well. and then you were Mayor of Accra. Mm -hmm. Is this different? from all those experiences in terms of whether it's the expectations or what you're supposed to deliver? Oh, this is not different. This is, uh, we're talking about a situation where I have to put my experience at the disposal of the nation through this mechanism. Because you know, the, some people don't understand and it's like, and that's why people can talk about um, being uh, sanctioned or invited by party, anti-party, I mean, because they don't understand. The last time I, you know, was, I wanted to file a go, and when they realized I had filed, or I was, I started campaigning, then they started the negative propaganda that I had gone to join MPP, blah, blah, blah. So I stepped down. So I because, I, because I found out that people were not properly educated. Meanwhile, there was somebody, there were two people from you know, um, the regions, including Greater Accra, who were NDC people, who ran and won. So this time around, I decided early, when people asked me to go the last time, and I spoke on virtually every platform, including TV3, people wanted to know, and I told them that Council of State is one of the important organs of the Constitution, which is the baby of the NDC. It was Jerry John Rollins who, you know, uh, fourth republic, inserted. The masses were the ones who uh, came up with the Constitution and inserted that clause, Article 86 is there. The Those chief were a ch former Chief Justice were all automatic. And then the rest will be people who will be elected by the MMDCs. And so I chose that one. And I campaigned and read the constitution on every platform with the media. So the tension came down and all the lies about Having been appointed, uh, going to work for an MPP, just fizzled out. So you're still a member of the National Democratic Congress. It's a question that nobody should ask because okay. I was not appointed by yeah. the MPP. As a Council of State member, usually the view is that now you've been elevated to the point of being a national statesman. Mm -hmm. Should partisanship, you know, feature? within that context. There's no way, no partisanship. I have been involved in any partisan, partisanship thing. It's people who don't understand these things who are. Let me tell you something I have not told anybody yet. When I started campaigning, some people who claim to be NDC element went to the field to campaign against me. And I just laugh at them. We formed a party. Do they know what campaigning means? Do they know how many times we've campaigned for the bigger picture, for them to call themselves NDC members and benefited from it. Many of those who benefited never campaigned for any you know, uh, party. They were not as visible as some of us were in those days. So it's a non-issue. From the regions, there were NDC people who won certain regions and the MPP, uh, others too from MPP won. And that is, it's like Parliament House. Have you ever seen a Parliament with just MPP or NDC or CPP? No. And people, if they want to talk politics, they must read 
and enrich themselves and wake up and stop, you know, uh, disgracing themselves all over the place. Now that you're a member of the Council of State, I do have to ask you, what are your thoughts about the public concern about Article 71 office holders then? Because if you've said that you're undertaking this tour so that people get to know the work the Council of State does, how does that feed into concerns about how Article 71 office holders are treated in comparison with the rest of the general uh, public in terms of those who serve you know, the public good? The uh, Article 71 is part of the Constitution. And when you read it, you know what it is that it's all about. And whatever Stapan is paid to, uh, everybody who is also an employee of the Article 71. So it's, it's a, an issue which I don't want to delve into it. Well, it's a constitutional issue and it didn't start yesterday. It started from the inception of our you know, constitution. So for those who may say that we need constitutional reforms, to deal with that article of the Constitution, what would you say to them? No, they should find out how to uh, do it. If you need something, you should know where to take it from. And when you take it through, and then there's a referendum or whatever you know, medium that is decided to be used, yeah, it will be done. And then the people, you know, when we talk about the people, many people, are not knowledgeable about things that they try to turn out there and educate people about. They don't know, they don't understand, they don't read. This is not the only country where you have that chamber. Oh. Let's talk about some immediate issues. And for some time now, obviously, you've been working as a Council of State member. But suddenly, um, the issue of Saglemi uh, took center stage particularly when it emerged that the Attorney General was going to charge um, erstwhile members of the NDC administration that implemented the housing project. I'm sure you heard about this earlier. Why didn't you speak up? I don't know that. I don't know about what the erstwhile members know. A particular person, a particular I'll person. come to mentioning the name. So the deal was signed for 200 million US dollars. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you were to build how many houses? 5,000? 5, 5,000 houses. Houses. All right. Mm -hmm. As of now, we know that only some, what, 670 houses or so have been built. There's still a lot of ancillary work. What, what, what the people of Ghana need to know. Truth. Is one. When you signed the deal, when what was the expectation? The, the deal, I never signed the deal. Let me tell you how it works. Okay. When the thing was settled, the president was satisfied, we had executive approval. I had the responsibility of going to parliament with you know a member. Because if it's been approved by the executive, it has to be approved by the legislature. And it went through. And it was approved, and that was when the people started. When the job was started, it didn't take one year when President Mills passed on. And after the elections... 2012 to 2013. Some of us were removed. Okay. So that was where you had even um, quite a number of us were removed. So you were no more works and housing minister no. after 2013. No. But then there's been a bit of contention about what the deal required, apart from the 5,000 houses. Were these houses supposed to be built in phases? Because let's face it, building 5,000 houses at once is not exactly a walk in the park. They were we building it. all 5,000 at once? Well, they started work in progress when you started in you. The focus of 5,000, they started it. Even if you put it there, black and white, that is going to be in faces. It will, when, so long as it's moving, you are building in faces. But what the, you know, the conspiracy theories that people are pushing out there, the technical, even you know, to the extent that there were no facilities, they didn't make any uh, provision for facilities and all that. 
electricity, water. Electricity. Was it all part of the two hundred million dollar deal? Yes. When you know, when that's what I'm saying. That you have it. Go through it. I I see. Uh, a portion of a document mm -hmm. which is said to have your signature. We talked about the fact that once the buildings are complete and off taken by Ghana Home Loans, mm -hmm. proceeds will be used to also complete some of these ancillary works. Is that something that um, if was not part of? About financing. Mm -hmm. I didn't sign anything like that because when you look at the memorandum that went through. Uh, Executive approval, that is the table of the president and to parliament. When you look at it, you see that it was signed jointly by the Minister for Finance and Economic Planning. Anything which has, you know, uh, financial implications. No minister signs alone. So it's there. I have all of them here. If you have time, I'll open up. Then you can take the shots. So like, 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 like when it was said by, you know, uh, Collins that I didn't leave uh, 100 overdoses. I left the 100 overdoses. And the conclusion, when you read that, I was available if there was anything that he wanted to be explained, I was available at any time. Are you saying that the terms of the deal you agreed were varied after 2013? I cannot say that because I've not having gone through whatever they did after 2013. Mind you, I've been an auditor. I'm an accountant. I've been an auditor before. I don't have worked checked by records everywhere I've worked. I don't be nobody can make deals with me. Because at the end of the day, there's always a day of reckoning. I tell people all the time that there was something interesting that sometimes some of us, uh, four ministers and others, those. You know, we joke with the president rolling them or something and you're not going, you're going where well, we will tell you that there will be a day of reckoning one day. And when that day comes and you were right, he will stand by you. We knew it. And for my home, my father, I've said it everywhere. My parents said, go to Pram Pram. We come from a home where you know, men and women of substance emerge from. And they always say, it, when, whatever you are doing, now that you have qualified, you started work, you should think about home. Don't go and do anything that will bring, you know, disgrace to the family. I know what they're talking about is not true. I have all the documents. That's why I say, anybody who wants us to talk about it, I will throw the things out. The other day, when Paul Adu got you called and the thing started, I was a bit upset. I told him that I should have told you after I brought all the documents. That was why we fixed to go again. And I went with all the documents. So that, you know, there was no handing over, it was shown. And all the things that you are talking about, they're here. So I guess three key things I just want us to bring clarity to. Mm -hmm. The deal was for 200 million, mm -hmm. no more, no less. Um, it was to execute 5,000 houses, well, including when, when, all the road, electricity, water, when, when and is, uh, disposables. When it started? When it started? There were people that were sending to do weekly inspections before they put, you know, two, three uh, blocks there to start a property. They have done the roads, the drainage, and all the things which matter. And they even were talking about green energy you know, uh, things that we're going to do. And the green energy bill was part of the, the deal? Yeah, or that was just yeah. a futuristic view? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. So in reference to the deal itself, you just paved that way. You didn't execute it. Yeah, I was, you know, they call me the father of the project, even those people have been saying it. So the reason, the reason why I'm asking is because uh, your successor, uh, Collins Dowda and others, mm -hmm. are being charged with intentionally misapplying public property, willfully causing financial loss to the state, issuing false certificates among, these come to, uh, are part of 52 false other charges. Yes. yes, for other charges. If you were asked to come to court, will you be available to share what you know? What I'm telling you, I'll say it everywhere, but they also know that I had nothing to do. Look at when I left. When I left, we packaged the thing. The thing 
I just started six, seven bands. The man who pushed me to go and do the thing had died because I was not relevant in the minds of certain people. And they appointed their own man and others to do the work. Why should I go there and talk to who about what? What I've done and some they are all the records. And it was just unfortunate that the release that I saw that the party has waded in, the communication director has said blah blah blah. If people talk about NDC and other things and are you still they said, they don't have to ask me that. We were the founders of NDC. And like I've been saying, the only person who wanted some clarity about certain things was uh, at you know, when he came over. And I will tell you the truth, which is there. All the things, the papers, I have the paper, I can give it to you, read, and then you know what it was. If he was not giving any hand over notes and he wanted to know what I had, I showed it, mine, to him. Anybody, because in my conclusion, the handing over note, I indicated to Colin Dada, he knows, he prays as a Muslim. He knows. There was no way, when the things were going, I was not bothering. I didn't go there to go and show anything until the impression was being created. And people who are naive and ignorant about how these things work, when they saw E.T. Mensah's name, mentioned, then they started shaking and were calling me. Can you remember that there was another um, issue that we were trying to cook, they lied, the conspiracy theory. And one MP asked me, I went, two days ago I went to some meeting out there and he said, I learned that he said, Titi Kwiti and I signed the financial agreement. I have the financial agreement here. It has nothing to do with Western Housing Minister. That was why the, everything that is signed jointly by the finance minister. And there was nothing like that. The financial agreements, everything, monetary, pay, were all done by the Minister of Finance. They are clothed with the authority to do it. Are you disappointed that this is the outcome of what seemed at that time a laudable project to provide social housing for Ghanaians? We know that more than 600 are complete. We know that some over 500 still need some work coming to the almost 1,100 you know, houses. Are you disappointed? I am dis totally disappointed for all the sleepless nights that I had with these gentle people who had retired, people who were ed more elderly, who had expertise. As someone who is involved in um, sports, we always want to churn out perfect teams. That is why we go and poach and pay they pay so much for players. So I gathered people who knew what they were about. With a legal person, their names are on, I pull it out and read it for you to know who we're talking about. So when things like this happen, you know, I don't wade into things which don't send me. I do it well so that when I wake up from my sleep, and then you wake me up and you add the thing from the top of my head. All that I'm telling you is all here in the document. I know I did ask you whether if you were asked to share what you know, you would. But looking at how these cases drag for so long, mm -hmm. what for you is your outlook? What would you want done if you were to meet the Attorney General, for instance, in reference to this matter? What would you tell him? Uh, well, what business do I have to go and meet the uh, Attorney General? Attorney General, and uh, they, the man who has been accused should have had lawyers. He had lawyers who wanted to know things which he doesn't know. It's different, you see, because the Attorney General is there. He knows what it's about, and so he made conducted all his, you know, research and things that he didn't understand. I'm sure he got it when. Uh, 
I thought yeah, I wanted to know things. I showed him. I even get when you run out or you got it because he said these are the facts. It was happy with it. Hmm? So for so for you, you would like please like to see an expedited action on this. Uh, on what? On the court case. How can I expedite action? No, I'm not saying you. I said you would like to see an ex so that it doesn't drag for so long as some of these cases do. And then everybody... Do you know that I don't think about it. I have a lot that I do. I, I write for various things. I do other things now. I have a digital responsibility as member of the council of state. I thought that um, there's so much... I don't know how to put it. So much treachery, treachery in our system, misinformation in our system. We don't appreciate people in this country. We don't, you know, um, honor those who need to be honored. These days, there are a lot of organizations are sprung up now. And I was, you know, uh, the legends appear, they honored me. I was pleasantly surprised that they knew so much. So what I took upon myself, when we started from um, 1982, when I didn't start policy from 1982. I'll, I'll come back to those bits, but I, let, let's just finish on the Yes. The question that you asked yes. is not yes and no question. <laughs> and what I'm trying to let you know is that I decided from any ministry that I went to, I put materials together. All the things that were dead, you put it together. But I knew that there would be a day of reckoning. Somewhere, you know, down the line, wow, some 30 years ago, you know, there's uh, certain the records straight, people will talk all back and forth. And I set up thing, the intellectual wing of the National Democratic Congress. When we were doing well, then the test one came in that these are people that you need to deal with, with facts and figures. And so every quarter we had a place to go and I was preparing handouts for them. But I knew that one day we will not be where we were at the time. And you must let people know. People forget when you read about the things. I say I have improvements seven year development plan. Accra, what we did, we didn't just do it as blind people. Consultation is important, people don't know. I tell people, I consulted Isikwe, the one who served longest as a mayor of Accra. Fantastic man. And he was so happy that me as a younger person, when he left, all those who went there were elderly people, had the wisdom to come and consult him. He pulled up. I said, I want a crap plan, 1958 plan, I have it. I made a copy and I used it. When you look at it, you remember, we were not just doing things uh, by heart then. So I also said, that I also have to put things together. And consultation is important. And when people come to consult you, you should be on your offers to assist them in whatever they are doing. Because no condition on death is permanent. So However permanent it is, death will stop you. So essentially, you are ready to face, um, in, you are ready to address any issue relating to Saglemi, if it has come to you. Yeah, I can't, you can't just wake up in the morning, go and lock somebody's door and say, yeah, yeah, I can. This thing that you are doing, A, B, C, D, do it this way. But the materials are also there, all the uh, handing over notes and the other materials. You go to finance ministry if you want to know about financing. I never sign anything for any financial thing to take place right. anywhere. Okay. And uh, you've been watching First Take with me, Jifa Bampo. My guest is Enoch Tay Mensa, popularly known as E.T. Mensa, former mayor of Accra, former Minister for Youth and Sports, as well as other ministries, uh, employment, works and housing, acted as education minister, all of that. Thank you for staying with us. Mm -hmm.